My friends, let's be real. When it comes to mixing or sound engineers, we don't typically love to read for pleasure. You know, we tend to read when we have to, especially when we happen upon a problem. Think I'm wrong? When's the last time that you opened up the manual directly after you downloaded a plugin? I'll wait. Yeah? Well, no one goes to the manual until they stumble upon an issue or they can't get something to work. But the problem with this mindset is there's actually people that take the time to write these instructions out to make your lives easier. And that may be a little boring because we prefer the style of learning that involves human connection. You know, that's what music's about. It's what we're used to in the studio and at shows, so it only makes sense that we prefer that over reading. We'll literally Google how to use a piece of software before reading about it from the person that made it. Well, I can't change how we think, but I can recommend some books that actually helped me evolve as a mixer. By the end of this video, you'll have five books you need to go pick up, you know, as soon as you can to take it to the next level. So what's happening, fam? Miami here with JST, actually got the JST on, you know? And I think the reason most people don't read books about audio is the same reason they might not read in general. It's all about finding someone that you connect with. It can be because of their work or maybe their personality type, but most authors in the audio world have one or two things, teaching ability or charisma. Those that have teaching ability can articulate their words very well, but it's hard for them to keep their audience engaged because for a lack of better words, they're gonna put you to sleep. And the charismatic mixer tends to be really good at his job, but doesn't know how to put it into words, you know? Sometimes you find the right combination of the two and you stumble upon somebody like Billy Decker. And Billy has a book out called Template Mixing and Mastering, The Ultimate Guide to Achieving a Professional Sound. And that all sounds good, right? You know, who doesn't want to achieve a professional sound? But I actually got to see him put his work into action on many occasions, you know, online and in real life. And I used to spend days on a mix, trying to get everything perfect and consuming my mind with analysis paralysis. But after watching him mix entire songs in less than 30 minutes, I realized how much of my time that I'm wasting. If I were in the middle of a test mix, I'd be beaten by any semi-pro simply because of the time it took for me to turn the project in. And if there are people out in the world mixing songs in under an hour, it gives you so much more wiggle room with your pricing. Not to say you should race to the bottom, but you could knock out tons of songs in a week. I won't even start a mix without a template these days, no matter what I do, because just loading one up saves me hours of time and it helps keep me organized. And it's all in the box, so that's nice too. There's so much that I learned about mixing and simplicity from this book. His philosophy preaches simplicity and that even goes for his signature bus glue series with us that takes the thought process of what the final touches on your buses should be. This is as much of a life changer as the book is and the link for that is in the description below. But yes, this is a good read that will fast track you to perfection when it comes to your mixes and workflow. Now, I kind of want to touch on an era when we did sit and read all the time. When the Andy Sneap forum was active and alive. It was a refuge for mixers and engineers as well as just having a wealth of information for anybody that was green to audio. Many of our favorite mixers and artists came out of there. Joey came out of there. You know, Ola England, Nolly, Brian Hood. It was just the perfect place and time and the collection of the right people contributing to and with each other to level up. An amazing sense of community I don't think the audio world has seen again until, you know, URM and Nail the Mix came around. And then there was actually someone else in that forum, Armin Hamidovic, and if you could bottle up the key notes of information that were talked about in that forum at the time and put it into a book, that would be the Systematic Mixing Guide. Opposed to the simplicity of Billy's book, Ehrman's guide goes into a bit more depth of understanding of the building blocks of mixing and how to approach it. This has been around for a decade and if I had just put my stubbornness aside and read it when I was first getting into mixing, I could have jumped over tons of the hurdles that I've had to deal with. These two books helped me immensely to get my mixing templates and to get the building blocks in order. But there was something else that I really needed to dive into. And it's from someone that I had the pleasure of having on this channel before. Uh, and his name is Bob Katz. And besides being the person that popularized parallel compression 40 some odd years ago, he's also the author of Mastering Audio, The Art and The Science. It's not just a book that's for sale, but it's used in a curriculum. Yes, sometimes we have to take it back to school, but think of it like this. This is a large amount of information 
that you can get without having to pay tuition whatsoever. And you're both reading the same thing, and Bob's a great teacher. When we want to get on the technical level of what mastering is, what it was, Understanding the psychoacoustics of clipping, you know, the different loudness measurements, tons of things you wouldn't even think about, but will give you a totally different understanding of what mastering is and why it's so important to us and how to utilize it the right way. So yeah, these three covered what I needed to know about mixing, mastering, and perfecting my templates. But there was something else in audio that I really needed to understand. And this was more on the business side of things. When you get into the world of really making records and dealing with labels, bands, and clients of any sort, you're gonna eventually get to the point of trying to understand music law as a whole. In this book, it's by an author called Donald Passman, and its name is All You Need to Know About the Music Business. It will help you understand how points work and the way that money goes to artists through streaming as opposed to digital and physical sales. This was recommended to me by one of my best friends, Mazen Ayub, and it's more than just worth a read. I would say if you plan on staying in the music business, you shouldn't even question it. This will be one of the smartest purchases purchases, but at the same time, will help you answer questions, not just for yourself, but for your clients as well. Remember this, you can make yourself extremely useful to your clients and peers by knowing the ins and outs of the business. This will help you with giving advice, helping people make better decisions, which in turn is usually reciprocated by having them come back to you for work and so on. It is a never ending cycle. And now for the last thing, as a singer, I'm always looking for the biggest tips I can to find on vocal production. And this is also a big reason that people like to work with me. They know that I see their voice as a unique instrument that deserves my utmost attention. And there's an ebook by no one other than Joey himself. The difference from this and other books I'm mentioning is that this one is absolutely free. It's an ebook that really helped me dive into furthering my vocal mixing knowledge when I felt like I had hit a plateau. And that kind of happens to all of us at some point, right? There isn't really any other information I've come across like this that doesn't dig into your wallet. And it's called uh, Vocal Mixing Secrets. The link for that is also in the description below. And I promise you, if you ever feel like you're struggling with your vocal mixes, this is one of those reads that's going to transform the way that you approach it. I always read the comments by you guys. And I notice tons of people always say, they appreciate the information that we give out in a short amount of time. You know, we try to really break it down into small bits. Well, this book is no different, and that's really why I wanted to share this with you all. So let's go over all of these one more time. Billy Decker with Template Mixing and Mastering, The Ultimate Guide to Achieving a Professional Sound, Ermin Hamidovic in The Systematic Mixing Guide, Bob Katz with Mastering Audio, The Art and the Science, Donald Passman with all you need to know about the music business. And finally, Joey Sturgis with Vocal Mixing Secrets. One thing I do wanna say about all those titles is, it's really cool that just by reading that title, it kinda gives you, it should always give you a really good idea of what's gonna happen, but those ones, you know what you're reaching for and what's gonna help you out, you know? This is a powerhouse collective of authors that all manage to give an invaluable amount of knowledge without even stepping on each other's toes. There isn't tons of crossover between these five authors, so every time you pick up one of these books or open it, if you're doing it digitally, you're learning something completely fresh and new. And sometimes we have to sit down and be disciplined to get further ahead. Even if you aren't the typical reader, this is the time to reach down deep and do something in the name of your career because you respect yourself and the craft as well as the others that came before you. Have you ever read any of these books before? Do you feel like there are any important ones that I missed? Leave it in the comments below and I will chat with you all like I always do. If you're an engineer on the come up, give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, you only have to do it one time, and tap that bell for notification so when a video drops, you know the location. Until next time, I'm out of here. Like, literally out of here. I don't have any more microphones to drop. I've broken probably like three SM57s. I'll catch you guys next time. <laughs>